Hello, my name is Grifted, and this is the definitive edition of my Hunting Horn Masterclass series. If you'd like to skip this intro, please look to the pinned comment section containing timestamps for each episode and select the one that interests you. Otherwise, sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and relax. This is going to be a long one, folks. I wanted to redo a couple things on the early episodes of the Hunting Horn Masterclass series because, well, I didn't really know what I was doing when I first started off, and I've been unhappy with the quality since releasing them. Now, as my equipment and skill for recording and editing has improved, I thought it was the perfect time to revisit the series. Changes have been made to many episodes, including new titles and a complete overhaul of the opening sequence. New music and all episodes besides the Flourish falsetto received new voiceovers, and many received complete script overhauls and revisions. Missing from the roster is episode 6, The Little Things. I consolidated the information contained in that video into the various other episodes, so there are only 7 Hunting Horn Masterclass episodes contained in the definitive edition as opposed to the original 8 episodes I made. Speaking of the original Hunting Horn Masterclass videos, they will remain up on my YouTube channel for everyone to see, and they are linked in the description of this video. In the description, you will find links to every person featured in the video, along with information on the music and title card art that you see and hear in the video. All of my sources that I got my information from are also linked in the description, and I did my best to cite my sources during the actual video as well. Please note that all the controller input annotations will be for the PS4 controller, so if you're using something else besides a PS4 controller, you'll have to translate the inputs yourself. I hope this video serves as a resource for all Hunting Horn players to use for the entire lifespan of Monster Hunter World and its DLC releases. This was an absolute labor of love, and is exactly what I imagine the Hunting Horn Masterclass series to be. Thank you for everything, and as always, Keep playing that sweet chin music, boys. Q-tabs, or Quick Turnaround Backslam, is a vital move for the Monster Hunter World Hunting Horn player to master. Q-tabs is not only stylish, but effective, and this technique dates back to Monster Hunter 3G, where we see the godfather of Hunting Horn speedrunning, Makachika Rip, using a pseudo version in their speedruns. Instead of doing a complete 180 degree turn, Maka turns 90 degrees, allowing for his neutral right swing or backslam to always connect with the head of a monster. This technique continued over the various releases of Monster Hunter, until it became a focal point of Monster Hunter Double Cross, or Generations Ultimate, for players using Brave or Valor style. In Monster Hunter World, Q-tabs are especially potent, partly because of the incredibly low stagger thresholds that most monsters have. We find that often, we are causing flinches with the first hit of a super pound, sometimes making you whiff the second hit of that super pound, which is the hunting horn's strongest hit. Backslam serves as a fantastic move to use when making a read on an upcoming flinch because of the above average motion value. The quick turnaround backslam allows the hunting horn user to put the hitbox of the backslam in front of them while moving forward, effectively serving as a better version of the forward slam. When comparing forward slam to a backslam, we see a difference of 6 motion value, 5 exhaust value, and no difference in the stun value. Performing a Q-tab is extremely simple, and here's how you do it. While moving towards a monster, flick the control stick back and then let go putting the left stick into a neutral position. Immediately after that flick, press neutral triangle plus circle. When done correctly, your character will perform a quick turnaround backslam. Here's what it looks like in real time. And here's a quick turnaround backslam slowed down. 
Moving forward, I want you to realize that Q-Tabs is not a replacement for Forward Slam, but simply another option. The reason for that is because the Hunting Horn is a read and reaction based weapon. Oftentimes, you're going to find yourself in a situation where the optimal choice will be to go for a Forward Slam instead of a quick turnaround back slam, or a neutral right swing, or a super pound. Like I stated earlier, the primary use of Q-Tabs will be for making a read on a flinch, like here in this Adagaron clip. I go for a Q-Tabs and connect with Odagaron, causing a flinch, which puts him right in front of me, allowing for a free follow-up. In this example, I don't suspect a flinch, but because of the distance Basil is away from me and the height of its tail, I know that a Q-Tabs will be the optimal choice to punish. Amadeus225 shows us how it's done in his Xeno Jiva speedrun, and Inevitable Truth shows us that sometimes it's okay to use a quick turnaround backslam just for the style points. When using the Q-Tabs technique, you will almost always never play a recital following a Q-Tab. It's simply far too situational, and on top of that, performing a recital after a backslam is one of the slowest ways to perform a recital. The optimal choice here is to simply roll, reposition yourself, then assess the situation. If you have an opening, go for a neutral recital, or a super pound, or any other option you choose. One of the coolest things you can do in Monster Hunter World is perform a quick turnaround backslam towards a ledge. Roll off the ledge, then do an aerial attack. This is highly situational and is almost always never the optimal choice, but it looks so cool, I just had to mention it. The quick turnaround backslam is a great technique and is suitable for players on every skill level. It's stylish, effective, and an all-around must-have tool to keep in your toolbox. I look forward to seeing more players utilize this groovy technique. Your big bloodshot eyes. La 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 la. la, la. <laughs> When a monster is sleeping, the next hit that touches the monster will do double damage. So when waking up a monster, you want to use the most powerful move available. For the Hunting Horn, the most powerful move is the second hit of the Super Pound. That means to wake up a monster effectively as a Hunting Horn player, you have to whiff the first hit of the Super Pound and connect with the second hit of the move. The key word here is spacing, which is a term that's frequently used in fighting games, and it refers to controlling the space between you and your opponent. Spacing your opponent's move allows you to punish easier, while spacing your move makes it harder for the opponent to punish you. We can take that same principle and apply it to Monster Hunter. To space the Hunting Horn Wake Up effectively, you must be within range to connect with the second hit, but out of range to whiff the first hit. This technique is explicitly difficult to teach because it's very much a game feel based tech. Meaning, the more familiar you are with the game and your weapon, the easier this is going to be. Sometimes, how a monster falls asleep will prevent you from being able to perform this at all. Maybe it's asleep against the wall or next to a cliff. When situations like that arise, just use a backslam to wake the monster up. Some people have mentioned that getting right up against the monster's head, then rolling out, will space the super pound perfectly. I tested this and had mixed results on various monsters. Because my results were uneven, I can't recommend that. The training room can be an effective tool in learning the spacing required for the technique and I would recommend that most players start there. Primarily, we see wake-ups used on the Arena Quest 3 speedruns because you're equipped with the Bonhorn, and on rare occasions you see it used in TA speedruns as well. It's an effective tool for both high-level players and beginners, though you don't get many opportunities to flex this technique. But on the rare occasions that you do, it results in super satisfying gameplay. 
Everyone knows you can use bombs to wake up a monster, and this is often the optimal choice, especially if you're just playing casually or you're not following the TA wiki rule set. You can detonate mega barrel bombs with small bombs, slinger ammo, boomerangs. Make sure you space out the boomerangs properly and uh, aim to the left. This is all common knowledge, but did you know you can detonate the mega barrel bombs with your hunting horn without getting hit by the explosion? The spacing is similar to the standard wake up, except slightly farther away. You just want to get your hunting horn hitbox close enough to the mega barrel bombs hurt box. Successfully performing this technique will result in a damage free bomb detonation. When coming to a monster sleeping in its nest after it fled your grasp, you'll want to perform the neutral weapon draw, then use a super pound to wake up the monster. The reason for that is simple. Draw attack motion values are terrible when you compare them to the second hit of the super pound. To perform a neutral weapon draw, simply stop moving. Make sure the control stick is in a neutral position and press your draw attack button. This can be done very quickly, almost instantly. The neutral weapon draw is seen in many speedruns as well. It's interesting that such a simple technique is implemented by extremely gifted top level players. I would be lying to you if I told you you'd be using the wake up every single time you go on a hunt but the rare occasions you need to pull it out of your pocket, you should be able to. Like how that old saying goes, I'd rather have one and not need it, than need it and not have one. In Japan, the hunting horn is called the hunting whistle or hunting flute and was introduced in the second generation of Monster Hunter titles. In its freshman debut, the hunting horn had a designated recital mode which saw the hunter immobilized while they input their notes for a song. In the hunting horn's sophomore outing, generation three, this was changed and recital mode was eliminated in favor of an integrated note system, which is what players today would be most familiar with. In Monster Hunter World, the Hunting Horn Recital is an integral part of your gameplay. Its uses range from the obvious passive role of buffing yourself and your teammates to a more active role. Using the recital as an offensive tool and playing that sweet chin music on a ferocious beast. In this episode of Hunting Horn Masterclass, I will teach you all that I know about recitals and hopefully you will learn how to cue songs effectively by using a few simple techniques. The flourish the hilt stab, the quick recital, and the quick encore. This is your song cue. There are many like it, but this one is my. <laughs> this is your song cue. It can stock up to three songs at a time, and you can play any of these three songs first by following the prompt located on your song cue. An easy way to cue songs is to use a flourish. And since I have an entire video dedicated to flourishes, I would recommend you to please look to the pinned comment section to find the flourish falsetto episode. But the long short of it is by pressing forward and circle, you will get a flourish. During this animation, you can input a second note of your choice. Hilt stabs are performed by pressing back plus any button you wish following any normal move. A quick recital is performed by simply queuing up a song you wish to play, making sure the last note you play is a hilt snap. Upon playing the recital, you will get a special animation, which sees your character flinging the horn up vertically. This animation is faster than a normal recital. To perform a quick encore, self-improvement must be the first song you play in your recital. Even if you're playing three songs at one time, self-improvement must be first. 
When you encore that song cue, you will get one less swing than you would have if you played any other song first. That kind of seems a little confusing when I say it out loud, but it's really not. Just play self-improvement first. Utilizing and combining these techniques will result in the fastest way to cue your songs. We see speedrunners do this before engaging a monster on a speedrun, but other uses include quickly refreshing your songs when a monster leaves the area, or refreshing your songs while a monster is sleeping before you or your team wake the monster up. So we know how to get the fastest recital possible. I'd like to now demonstrate the optimal note order for a collection of hunting horns, looking at self-improvement and attack up specifically. For hunting horns like Deep Vero, Kulftaroth Pipe Sleep, and the Heavy Bone Horn, and any hunting horns that share their note set, you cue your songs like this. Draw Attack, Hilt Stab Triangle, Forward Circle for the Flourish, Triangle Plus Circle during the Flourish, Hilt Stab Triangle, and play your quick recital with R2 Plus Circle. For the Empress Roar Sticks, Draw Attack, Hilt Stab Triangle, Forward Circle, Triangle Plus Circle during the Flourish, Hilt Stab Triangle Plus Circle, R2 Plus Circle for the Quick Recital, playing Self-Improvement first. For the Empress Roar Blaze, Draw Attack, Hilt Stab Triangle Plus Circle, Neutral Triangle Plus Circle, Forward Circle for the Flourish, Triangle during the Flourish, Hilt Stab Triangle, and then R2 for the Quick Recital. Whew! That is a basic rundown of how to cue songs quickly. If for some reason you need a third song, just remember to end your last note with a hilt stab and to play self-improvement first. Get creative and figure out the best way to cue three songs on your favorite hunting horn. A small technique I'd like to discuss is the hunting horn shuffle. You can move while playing songs, which helps for micro adjustments to your positioning. We see speedrunners do this in the middle of a speedrun to get better positioning with an encore on a downed monster. Before the fight though, when queuing your songs, you can extend the shuffle distance by canceling the animation of the walk. After playing your recital, press forward on the control stick to begin moving forward. When this glow happens, indicating your song has been applied, let go of the control stick, putting it in a neutral position. Then press and hold forward again to begin walking once more. What you're doing is canceling the animation and restarting it, allowing you to walk a little more. I want to quickly stress that your recitals are not only for buffing you and your teammates, but also for damage. Remember, you can roll cancel out of your recitals, so you aren't locked into place like in previous games. During the fight, I want you to think of your song cue as a gun, and your songs like bullets. It's up to you to fire them off at opportune moments. I want you guys to avoid playing your songs in the corner of a map away from the fight, and instead, I want you guys to be gunslingers. In fighting games, a move cancel is the act of interrupting the animation of an attack, opening up opportunities for damage that would otherwise be impossible without the cancel. This principle can be applied to the hunting horn in Monster Hunter World. By using cancels, the hunting horn player is able to achieve a more active, mobile, and damage focused role. There are three main ways to cancel in Monster Hunter World, and I'd like to begin with the roll. Perhaps the most basic way to cancel, yet most used by players, is the roll. Almost all moves in the Hunting Horn's arsenal have lingering animations that prevent the player from moving for a short time. Luckily, you can cancel that animation with a roll, allowing for a more mobile and aggressive Hunting Horn player. I'd like to provide some side-by-side -side comparisons for you so you understand the importance of canceling. During the entire ending animation of a Super Pound, you can input a roll whenever you want, meaning you can just sit and wait. 
which is helpful for some situations when you won't be able to roll out of danger and instead will have to attempt to iframe the incoming attack. High level players will purposefully attempt those iframes in order to get an opening on the monster. This waiting concept is important to be mindful of. Don't flowchart monsters and go through the motions. Instead, be purposeful and thoughtful of what you're doing. Keep in mind that you can roll in four different directions. To make this easier, make your camera settings like mine. These settings will allow you to roll in the direction you want regardless of your camera's orientation. Left will always be left, right will always be right, so on and so forth. Also, while we're here, go ahead and make these changes too. This allows for a wider field of view and a less obtrusive camera experience. We covered the traditional use of hilt stabs in episode 3, but I'd like to propose a different use for them here in this episode. By pressing back plus an attack button following any regular attack, you'll get a hilt stab. This is technically categorized as a move cancel, since we are in fact canceling the ending animation of a move with another move. The hilt stabs aren't inherently impressive at first glance, but when used in combination with other moves, it becomes quite potent. An example of this would be Super Pound, Hilt Stab, Super Pound, perhaps used when a monster is downed. Even if you aren't connecting with the Hilt Stab, it's still beneficial to use because of the quick notes you receive when doing it, allowing you to keep songs stocked in that song queue and to fire them off whenever you see fit. Using a quick recital can be a fast way to sneak in some damage, like I did here versus the Greatest Jagras, or it can be used to go for a risky dunk on a flying monster. Technically, you can cancel three moves with the recital. Those three moves are the forward slam, draw attack, and super pound. And the recital we used to cancel is forward recital. The reason for this is that all other recitals come out too slow and they're very situational, making them rarely used. Encores are a different story, of course, and the directional encores see many uses. Forward Recital following a Forward Slam or Super Pound has effectively become this game's bread and butter combo. This combo is fantastic and super viable. You can Super Pound and if you don't get a flinch, you can react and get a Forward Recital which could net you a flinch or a KO. You could get bold and attempt an Encore following a Forward Recital, like here in this Rathalos speedrun I did. You can Forward Recital and Roll Cancel to reposition if you get caught with your pants down as well. Also, a side note, raw forward recital is almost never a good option compared to raw neutral recital. Raw forward recital comes out so slow because of the swinging forward animation. You circumvent that animation when you combo forward recital off of a forward slam or super pound. So when you see someone using raw forward recital, they could have used a forward slam into forward recital in almost the same amount of time. Small optimizations like this take your gameplay from intermediate to advanced. I'd like to mention three more things before we wrap up. We see roll cancels used in almost every speedrun for every single weapon when the runner takes a consumable. There is a small animation left over after your consumable has been, well, consumed. And you can roll cancel that animation allowing you to take another consumable in a faster amount of time. You can pseudo cancel the animation of equipping slinger ammo. It's a very small optimization. While not technically a cancel, if you hold the R1 button while opening up the quest menu from the handler or the quest board, you receive a sped up animation. It might not mean a lot to some of you, but after hundreds of attempts on speedrunning a monster, the time saved by speeding up that animation really adds up. Because of the seamless gameplay of Monster Hunter World, you may have been utilizing these move cancels and not even known it. It's important to understand on a fundamental level what you as the player are doing, because understanding and knowledge is important for personal growth and improving your hunting horn gameplay.
The Devil Joe Slap is a counter to Devil Joe's counter and was pioneered and popularized by the masterful hunting horn player Q. Q led the way in early Monster Hunter World hunting horn meta development. According to the arena expert Rashes, Devil Joe has four areas with their own separate damage thresholds, chest, head, and each leg. Once you reach a certain threshold in one of those parts, Joe will use his counter attack. My results before and after making the original Devil Joe video match up exactly with what Rash has said. During Devil Joe's counter, you must inflict damage to slap Joe out of the animation of his move. This is effectively called the Devil Joe slap. To consistently pull this off, we use neutral recital, but you can technically use any move to slap Joe out of the counter. Neutral recital serves us well because of its active hitboxes coming out in front of you, and very quickly. Think of it like a protective shield from Devil Joe's counter. Because of the hitboxes being in front of the hunter, you have less of a chance to get hit outright or trade hits with Joe. Though this is still very possible and likely to happen while you're learning the timing. Essentially, when Devil Joe stands up on his hind legs to begin his counterattack, that's when you should start playing your neutral recital. You need to be mindful of your character though, like if you had just performed a backslam to cause the counter, your neutral recital is going to come out slightly slower than usual, so you have to take these micro adjustments into consideration when going for a slap. Like I stated earlier, you can slap Double Joe with really any move. Forward slam, back slam, super pound, encores. It's all situational, and it all comes down to how comfortable a player is. What I'm teaching is the basic, safest way to perform the slap. Rocksteady and Temporal Mantle give the player a risk-free amount of time to use the slap. So while getting used to this technique, I suggest using those pieces of equipment to help understand the timing without getting too frustrated. A successful slap will reward the player with a huge topple, giving the player a massive amount of time to do whatever they want. You can pursue Devil Joe and continue your onslaught, possibly linking into a KO or a kill. Devil Joe Slap works for Tempered Devil Joe as well, but because of how hard Tempered Devil Joe hits, it makes the Devil Joe Slap much more risky and much more satisfying to use. The Slap is a stylish technique and perfectly embodies the risk-reward philosophy. It's high risk because if you mistime your Slap, you're gonna get a face full of Devil Joe and his counter is one of his most powerful moves. But the reward for successfully landing a slap, well, that could be the difference between a successful hunt or a failed hunt, a PB or even a world record. And to me, that's a risk worth taking. It's intermission. Rise and stretch time. Origins of the hunting horn date back to ancient times, and as the name horn indicates, early instruments were made from the actual horn of an animal. Metal horn instruments are found as early as the 10th century BC from Scandinavia, and bronze horns were used on 6th century BC battlefields to strike fear into the hearts of opponents. In the 17th century, single note horns were used for sport hunting, and as the complexity and design of the horn continue to evolve, we see more and more incorporation of the horn as a musical instrument. Sonic Waves functions like the throwable slinger ammo, Screamer Pod. Essentially, if a monster has a move that allows it to go underground, Sonic Waves will pop that monster up out of the ground, giving you, the hunter, a large opening, potentially setting you up for some big damage. Sonic Waves, in theory, should work on Levasioth, but in my testing I found no noticeable, meaningful application. I guess Levasioth sort of does something here, and I was able to replicate this a few times. Though, this provides little to no opening for the hunter and is entirely insignificant. 
Deteridos is another monster that should also in theory be susceptible to sonic waves. And again, I found no noticeable, useful application for sonic waves. I tested both of these monsters twice, once for the original video and again for this video. Where Sonic Waves really carves out a niche is in the Diablos and Black Diablos matchups. Both of these monsters use dig attacks frequently. Also, they're highly susceptible to Sonic Waves, and they never build a tolerance to it either. Meaning, they will always be affected by Sonic Waves, no matter how many times you've used it. Let me level with you for a second. The utility of Sonic Waves is completely dwarfed by the Slinger Ammo Screamer pod. With the Hunticorn's relatively quick sheath speed and the availability of Screamer pods, it almost completely negates the need for Sonic Waves. However, there are certain instances during the matchup where you won't have enough time to sheath and throw a Screamer pod. These instances could potentially be opportunities for you to use Sonic Waves. Also, because Sonic Waves is so cool and you have such few opportunities to use it, you should pretty much always be using Sonic Waves. Sonic Waves really shines in time attack speedrun settings where all Slinger ammo except Dung Pods are banned. This gives us a reliable way to get Diablos or Black Diablos out of the ground and opened up for an offensive rush. Both of the Diablos monsters are pretty similar when it comes to their dig, with regular Diablos digging slightly slower and Black Diablos digging slightly faster. The other difference is Black Diablos stays underground longer than its normal counterpart, at least it felt that way to me. This is interesting because it makes the timing for Sonic Waves a little more strict on regular Diablos. One thing to take into consideration is the distance between you and Diablos when they begin their dig animation. The closer you are to Diablos or Black Diablos, the more strict the timing for Sonic Waves will be. On the other hand, the farther you are from Diablos when they begin their dig, the more wiggle room you have to execute the Sonic Wave song. A problem I noticed is that their dig speed is affected depending on how exhausted or enraged they are during the fight. Being enraged makes the timing more strict because they dig slightly faster. When they're exhausted, they dig slightly slower, which can often mess up your timing and see you play Sonic Waves before they're underground. Another problem I noticed is if you're fighting Black Diablos in her nest and she digs with the intent of going behind the waterfall of sand and you try to play Sonic Waves, Sonic Waves will not work. The same is true if Diablos or Black Diablos are digging to flee the area. Sonic Waves will have no effect. The general rule for both monsters is as soon as you see the dig animation begin, that's when you should play your song. Sonic Waves won't proc until the song is complete, so it's important to start playing the song while they are digging and not underground yet. It's best to play neutral recital when you see the dig animation, and it's important to be cognitive of what moves you have been using. For example, if you backslam then try to play neutral recital, you'll get a longer animation than usual, potentially messing with your timing and resulting with you getting punished with a face full of Diablo's horn. When the monster gets hit by sonic waves while it's underground, it looks like they're in a pitfall trap, and their head swings wildly back and forth. What I find to be the safest, most consistent way to capitalize on this trap state is by canceling the ending animation of your sonic wave song with a roll towards the monster, then begin trying to super pound. A riskier and more damaging way to capitalize on the trap state of the monster is to encore your sonic wave song on the monster's chin for big damage. This requires good spacing and awareness from the player. It's easy to whiff or get feeble hits during the encore because the Diablos doesn't stay still. Going for a Sonic Waves encore combo could either kill your time, get you a new PB, or even break the world record. For me personally, the reward always outweighs the risk by a long shot. I always go for the encore combo because if I've taught you guys anything, it's that style trumps substance in every single way, especially if you're a Hunting Horn player. Let's talk about some specifics during the fight. If you play a song too early and have multiple Sonic Wave songs ready to go in your song queue, just continue playing your recital and the second Sonic Wave song should proc. If you're too close to the monster after Sonic Wave's procs, go for a roll and reposition. For style points and big damage potential, turn away from Diablos when they begin their dig. With your back facing the monster, play neutral recital, and when Sonic Wave's procs, back encore into their face. Look. This is an advanced technique and is certainly difficult to master. It's up to you as the hunting horn player to decide does the risk outweigh the reward. Do you stand in the face of danger and play your beautiful melodies towards impending doom? Or do you run away and play a safer game? 
For me, y'all already know what the answer is. I'm playing that sweet chin music, boys. <laughs> this is an extremely niche technique for an extremely niche weapon on two extremely niche monsters. But it's important for the Huntingorn player to have this in their toolbox because not only is it super effective, but it's one of the most stylish things you can do. Hello, my name is Grifted, and this is episode 8 of my Hunting Horn Masterclass series. Today we will be discussing the Flourish and why it's absolutely vital to the Hunting Horn player. To start, the Flourish is performed by pressing forward and circle on the PS4. This is a double note swing with average motion value which you can see here. What's unique about the Flourish though, is that you can input another note during the animation of the second swing. Simply press the corresponding note you want during the animation and you'll receive it. This is why the Flourish is often called the double note swing. The Flourish is most obviously useful for queuing up songs quickly, but there are a few more uses. The second hit of the flourish hits very high. This is useful for monsters who are flying constantly, like Kushalo or Azurarathalos. Because of how fast the double note swing puts out two hits, this makes the flourish your go-to move to apply status ailments quickly. Hunting horns with the blast ailment should especially be mindful of using the double note swing to apply those blast procs. This synergizes well with the Empress Roar Sticks hunting horn, which has a song, All Wind Pressure Negate, and is queued up easily using the flourish. Where the flourish really gets exciting in my eyes is when you cancel the second hit of the flourish with a roll. This technique is called the flourish cancel and at first glance may not seem very useful. Since we're only hitting the monster with the first hit of our flourish, the motion values are essentially cut in half. This move, the flourish cancel, is deceptively a great move for the hunting horn. Here's why. In fighting games like Street Fighter, a jab or standing short is used to check the opponent to make sure the opponent is blocking or not pressing any buttons they shouldn't be pressing. In Monster Hunter World, we use a flourish cancel the same way, to check the monster. The Hunting Horn is a read and reaction based weapon, meaning most of the decisions we make as a Hunting Horn player comes from a guess. The Flourish Cancel serves as a tool to throw out on these guesses that is a mostly risk-free option. If I suspect the monster is going to flinch, I might throw out a Flourish Cancel to get the flinch, then follow up with a Super Pound. You see, sometimes you will flinch a monster on the first hit of the Super Pound, which will cause the monster to move out of the way of your most devastating attack. If I don't really know what a monster is going to do next, I might throw out a Flourish Cancel just to see, as a shot in the dark like here on this Odagaron speedrun I did. I used the Flourish Cancel to get some damage, roll away to reposition, a risk-free play that is both passive and applying pressure at the same time. We see the Flourish Cancel used on many early arc-tempered Valhazak speedruns to punish Val's sweeping attack. It serves as a quick, easy, and risk-free way to punish that move, but lately has lost favor due to the Backslam being an equally safe, more damaging move to punish Val's spin. When Pink Rathian's head is broken, she is much more susceptible to flinches. When she begins her triple charge stampede, you can stop her dead in her tracks with a flourish cancel most of the time. These are just some of the many examples of the usefulness of the flourish cancel. The flourish is a real workhorse of a move, providing a quick fast way for you to queue up your songs with the regular double note swing, while also providing a relatively safe move to check your monster with the flourish cancel. This is a stylish, essential move for every hunting horn user to have in their toolbox, and I hope you implement it into your own hunting horn gameplay. And that's it. My complete hunting horn masterclass series. 
I started my YouTube channel to counter the misinformation surrounding the hunting horn, which was perpetuated by uninformed content creators. I also wanted to bridge the gap between intermediate and advanced players, and I hope I've done both of those things with my videos. Doing YouTube over the past year has been <laughs> incredible. I've been so blessed to be able to have taught and inspire so many hunting horn players. It seems like every week I get DMs or emails from fans who say the hunting horn masterclass series has helped them improve as a player. To them and all of you watching, I just wanted to say thank you for giving some random guy a chance to get his message out there. I look forward to seeing what comes next for Monster Hunter World and I look forward to seeing more people play the hunting horn the way it was meant to be played on a monster's face. Thank you for everything. And please, for me, keep playing that sweet chin music, boys.